Hi there. Today, I want to share with you on four aspects of emotional intelligence. Now, emotional intelligence or EQ for short is just a fancy word. In other words, it's how we deal with our emotions. Now, why am I sharing this? Recently, I had a conversation with some of my friends and one of the main topics we happen to talk about is emotional competence. Now, how well do we cope with our emotions? And especially in times like this with the infamous COVID-19 situation, uh, we feel that you know things could have been way better. If some of us here would have been calmer, if some of us here would have think before we act, then we wouldn't have so much of a panic or confusion. You know, the panic buys, the overpurchase of masks, and the spreading of articles and news without verifying them first. Now, some of us here would feel really quick to jump on a panic boat and ride with it <laughs> because it's simply easy to do so. Have you ever felt like you're quick to panic? Have you ever felt that you're easily getting into frustration or annoyance? Or have you ever felt like flipping a table when you think someone has said something silly? It's very normal to feel this way. However, it is not okay to let it take control of you. And what do I mean? Now, emotions can really drive you to your best decisions or your emotions can lead you to your worst decisions. What is the difference? The difference is in our control of our emotions. And yes, we can control our emotions. And that's exactly what I want to do for you in this video to help you be in control by firstly showing you the four aspects of emotional intelligence. Now, the first one is aware. Being aware of what's happening around you and how it makes you feel really gives you that advantage, gives you that information to decide on what to do next. And let me share with you a personal experience of mine. Now, many years ago, I got into my first car accident. Now, it wasn't me, <laughs> let me just be clear. I was driving really carefully, coming to a stop when suddenly a car from behind accidentally hit me. You know, it hit my butt. But what this car did was reverse very quickly and sped off. I was in complete shock. I was stunned. I also panicked a little bit because I didn't know what to do. And guess what? I did nothing. <laughs> My first experience, I don't know what to do, I just let it be and I had to pay my, for my own damage. It was moments later that I knew I could have done something. Now, have you felt the same way before? <laughs> so this is being aware. And that brings us to number two, respond. Knowing how you have felt, knowing what has happened, the experience that you have, it's time to decide what you want to do with it. You can either be the same or you can do something differently. Emotions can lead you to the best of decisions or it can drive you to the worst of decisions. It's all about in the control of your emotions. Now remember I told you about the car accident number one just now? Well, unfortunately, many months later, there was car accident number two. <laughs> so what happened is I was driving down um, going to a tunnel and suddenly I heard this car screeching and it actually hit my car by the side and I did, couldn't see this car initially you know until it hit and that was the one moment that I suddenly panicked I got shocked and I was like wow again but this time around I decided not to stay panicked I decided to do something really different so I stopped the car and thankfully the other car stopped as well what I firstly do is I wanted to check what the car number plate was because my first experience, the other person sped away. I don't know whether this person is going to do the same. So I took down the car plate number. <laughs> uh, then I wrote down the details of the car that I can recognize and remember. And then finally, I spoke to the driver. Uh, now, I could be very angry because the driver banged me, but I chose to stay calm because at the end of the day, I don't want any more issues or troubles. I just want to resolve this as quickly as possible and get going. And number three is connect. And this is where it involves people. Now, some of us here, we may find the need to express ourselves to other people. And that's absolutely normal. 
or others to express themselves to us. In the connecting itself, it's very important to know that we all have different preferences when it comes to communication. The way we say how we're happy, the way we say how we're sad or angry or proud or excited would be very different from others. Now, you may meet someone who is similar like you and that's great, but in other cases where you might not meet someone else who shares the same preference, it's good to know and to empathize that they may have a different point of view, a different perspective where they may come from. I have a friend and she told me that she couldn't connect with her colleagues at her workplace. She often tells me, Jeff, I just can't get it. I don't know why my colleagues are not understanding what I'm trying to say. Now let's take a pause right there. Have we felt the same experience before? Now her colleagues are not incompetent or intentionally being difficult with her. They may be not seeing the same perspective as her. That's why they're not getting it. They may need help maybe in illustration, in a story or example, or just need to experience it to know what it is. Or they may be completely off the chart on another book itself. We don't know. And the point is, people have very different preferences when it comes to communication, and people have very different reasons to doing what they do. We just need to show empathy and to help them understand that. And point number four, sustain. Now in good times, things go well. We feel happy. You know, the world is a wonderful place. But what happens when times become challenging? What happens when things fall apart and they don't go according to plan? Can we still remain the same, as calm, as happy, and as objective as we want to? What can we do to ensure that we remain in this good state all the time so that we can get the best results for us? Now, I'd love to share more with you on emotional intelligence, EQ itself, and how you can improve your own EQ. And if you have any questions um, or any topics that you'd like me to cover more on in this area, feel free to comment below or send me a message. Until then, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!